today we're going to talk about LCD sound system and the concept of a legacy. But first, I ask that everybody suspend their disbelief and keep an open mind for an anecdote about pro wrestling. I think I'm cute. The Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels is one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time. Bursting with charisma, some of the highest quality in-ring talent ever, and a storyteller if there ever was one. For me at least, that's a pretty good representation of why I enjoy this silly, demented industry full of pros and cons. One thing that sorta of just comes with the territory of being a wrestling fan is getting let down. Whether it's bad practices behind the scenes, plot lines that go nowhere, or moments when the audience essentially gets a middle finger to the face by the human embodiment of evil, it's rare for me to truly be hurt by this stuff because so much of it is a total mess anyway. However, in this world where low expectations can be the norm, many storylines come and go without holding much weight at all, and far too many of these guys end up wrestling until they can barely walk. Shawn Michaels was the outlier. With a beautiful narrative to his whole career, a strong beginning, middle, and end where they didn't go back on the stipulations they had created for themselves, one of the greatest of all time retired while he technically still probably could have gone on for another decade at least. The man went out on top after the main event of the biggest show of the year with a glorious ribbon wrapped around the plotline of his wrestling story. That was until eight years after his retirement, Shawn Michaels came back for one last awful, embarrassing, poorly worked match, paid for by bad money, and while I still love the guy, the Heartbreak Kid stayed true to his name and kind of broke my heart. Wow. Looking back on his decision to end LCD Sound System, James Murphy told The Guardian, We were set up, especially in America, to make a similar record to our last one and just be way bigger. And that made me deeply sad. It just kind of sickened me. It's playing a game like pro wrestling. You know who's going to win. And I felt as if I would have to f up, make a record that's like, f you everybody, which is so artificial when artists do that, when they forcefully destroy themselves. So it seemed like the most beautiful and honest thing to do was to just not do it. LCD Sound System is a band with a story. Formed in 2002 by James Murphy at the age of 31, their self-titled album had the indie scene wrapped around their finger, even earning a Grammy nomination with Daft Punk is playing at my house, which was just as much a fantasy coming true as it was a song. The success of their debut album actually led to James Murphy releasing a 45 minute long workout soundtrack with Nike, appropriately titled 4533. In 2007, the band saw the release of their second album album Sound of Silver, a project even more beloved than their debut, especially thanks to artist-defining tracks like North American Scum, Someone Great, and the song that introduced a whole generation of indie kids to their first existential crisis, All My Friends. That's how it starts. This is also one of the group's most earnest and vulnerable albums, with James Murphy clearly fighting with the idea of aging, imposter syndrome, and the way life just keeps moving on, whether you're ready or not. And that is part of why LCD Sound System was so special, because James Murphy was so jaded by the time he had reached success, because he understood how temporary it all was, how how fickle a concept relevance is, and that both made and eventually broke the band. Then it happened. The release of an album that defined the 2010s indie music scene, This Is Happening. 
because Daft Punk played at your house, all your friends are no longer someone great, so you've gotta dance yourself clean with drunk girls. It's the only way. But seriously, there's no way to explain how ubiquitous this album was. It was empathetic and honest, and also just had some damn good electronic music. There's undoubtedly still waves of this album being heard today. However, a legacy is a heavy weight to bear, and James Murphy soon felt in over his head, making himself ill with the pressure of touring and performing. He also had a nagging voice in the back of his mind saying all of this relevance would soon fade, and he didn't want to be the tired dad on stage clinging to a fading spotlight, saying, I'm 41, and at a certain point, I think it gets embarrassing. So less than 10 years from creation, LCD Sound System was laid to rest with one last goodbye, an emotional Madison Square Garden concert and a documentary to record it all. And it was a beautiful, bittersweet goodbye. But they had made it, and we were happy to have been along for the ride. Or so we thought. Five years later, they came back to release a Christmas song. Then they were back dropping an album and touring. Now what? It's painful to say, but these releases were not exactly met with a warm welcome back from the fans. In fact, it felt like a bit of a slap in the face. A lot of fans found themselves asking, what was all of that for? It felt like they were cheapening the legacy they'd built over the last decade. There were also a few ill-timed jokes from James Murphy about ending the band to sell tickets which maybe isn't the joke to make when your fans aren't feeling the best about you, especially when you ended the group with an extensive vinyl release, but I digress. American Dream, their 2017 comeback album, isn't bad at all. In fact, it's pretty good. Tonight is a playful, sardonic, house-tinted electronic song, and easily could have fit on This Is Happening, especially with its emphasis on the temporary and repetitive nature of life. It's not an abrupt switch of style. The tone is pretty consistent with the rest of LCD Sound System's catalog. But American Dream is still hobbled by its own legacy. It's a good album, sure, but as a comeback from the dead, it leaves a little room to be desired. It would have been a perfectly good album if it had just been allowed to exist without the unreachable expectations that had been set in place by its own creators. I feel similarly about their latest release, New Body Rumba, made for the Netflix original White Noise. It's more of the same from James Murphy and co, and while I love Nancy Wong rhythmically yelling words and punky tinkering synth as much as the next guy, it just comes across a little more deflated than it would have had it not been preceded by a goodbye. It makes otherwise good tracks feel tacked on like an afterthought. As unfortunate as it is, all of this was James Murphy's own doing. A sense of self-awareness is a good thing, but he seemingly let himself become his own biggest critic in the worst way. The idea of relevancy became an enemy a countdown to a faded fall. During an interview with the New York Times shortly before their comeback, he said, I liked being the band that was relevant to me. I felt like we were about to be the band that was not relevant to me. And I wish he'd told himself five years ago what he told all of us on tonight. You hate the idea that you're wasting your youth, that you stood in the background. Oh, until you got older but that's all lies. Because the youth that James Murphy was so fixated on wasting, along with the mistakes he made throughout, is what led him to the greatest successes of his career. We all loved him because he failed and still tried, proving he could still make it. He had already proved himself, just not to himself. So make all kinds of art, make bad art. It's real experiences and real mistakes that make us and lead us to destinations previously thought to be unreachable or plain unheard of. I am glad to hear that LCD Sound System is figuring out a healthier way to make music. 
In an update posted to Facebook in 2022, Murphy said, We really wanted to stop living like that, so we talked about just playing some shows in New York since most of us live here. It's not overwhelming, so I can work on new music and we can all be human beings. Maybe we'll just play other places next year, moving around to cities we like to play, where we're wanted, etc. Since then, not much. They're touring and have played quite a few festivals. Maybe they'll come out with an album soon, and maybe not. Years of silence, and now it feels like they burned out just to reignite and be put on the back burner again. All of this might just be personal to me. It's hard to say goodbye, and the unappealing other option is that James Murphy pulls a Morrissey and recruits a near-identical band to make more of the same music. And I can respect admitting a mistake and going back instead of saving face and essentially doing the same thing, I just wish that he didn't have to burn it all down first in order to realize that. Hey, thank you for watching that video. If you want to support the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media at RenshawHS. You can buy my merch, support my Patreon, and thank you again. I'll see you soon.